He loses his mind. Well, the weird thing is, like, this is like the perfect environment. Doors closed, windows closed. He can't hear any other dogs walk around out there. Cause he's got maybe a cool he drink can... in his hand. Yeah, if if he hears that collar jingle, he's at one of the windows barking his head off. Hmm. Well, that's why these two yeah. are in here with me. Yeah. yeah. That's why neither of my cats are in this room with me. <laughs> that's also why your cats are not dogs. Yeah. Oh, did you get, did you get a new rescue? <laughs> yeah, we actually got two rescues. So this, this is actually a good story. We got um, a four-month-old um, feral uh uh, male cat and so far he's been fantastic awesome um and when we went in we know we knew we wanted to get two cats because we want mm -hmm. cats that would kind of be friends while we're away at work yeah um cats, cats are never friends cats are always <laughs> friends yeah um except when one's really old and one's really young then well, the old one hates the young one yeah <laughs> uh, and thankfully not in our case but we um we uh we went to the the rescue and we said all right we want we want the cat that nobody else wants oh. like the older cat you know has a manageable you know possibly manageable disease something like that you know not too big but um some the cat that someone's gonna look at and be like oh it's not a kitten so i'm not i don't want yeah, yeah. we keep it the 50 to 80 dollars a month range to maintain them yeah right exactly <laughs> so uh they're like okay great we've got and we asked if they had any bonded pairs. And they're like, yeah, all right, we got the perfect cats for you. We have these three cats. Unfortunately, they have FIV. Oh, what is that? Cat AIDS. <laughs> no, it's, li it's literally what? cat AIDS. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a cat autoimmune deficiency. But the problem is, is it's so uh, contagious. Yeah. Um, it travels through their saliva. So if the cat does their standard like rubbing against you marking thing, and then your cat goes to rub against you in the same spot, they have FIV. Yeah. Um, so we said, all right, well, they sure are cute, but uh, we know enough people that have cats, and we don't we don't want to expose their cats to FIV. So we don't yeah. want to be the carriers. Yeah, we don't want to be patient zeros. Patient zero. Yeah. Um, <laughs> jinx. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so we said, um, we said like, all right, do you have, what about your next cat? Uh, Wait, where's the next saddest you know, story? And <laughs> we go up one rung on this ladder. Yeah, and they said, <laughs> oh, you're looking for Scuttle. I was like, oh, okay, well, apparently this is a well-known troubled cat. Um, and they show us to this cat, eight years old, has minor bladder problems, like bladder okay. stones. Um, which is just feed them a different type of food, and it's not a problem. Um, but when it is a problem, it's totally gross. Probably. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's an orange tabby male, and it is 18 pounds. Wow. That's a big kid. It is a horse. <laughs> this is easily the biggest, and it it's the cutest cat I've ever seen because its nice. nose is too long. <laughs> it has an overbite and snaggle oh my teeth, God. and its eyes are a little too small for its head. So it always looks like it's sort of not surprised, but always sort of like calculating. Yeah, it that's always, awesome. It, I'll just see pictures so one of these days. That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's been surprising because the feral cat has had a little bit of trouble kind of um, getting used to all the sounds in the house um, mm -hmm. because it it only been in the rescue for about a month. Okay. Um, but Scuttle uh, just kind of, we took him out of his crate and then he just kind of laid down. He's like, "All right, I live here now. Cool, thanks, yeah. guys." That's a great name too. Uh, yeah, Scuttle? it's Scuttle with a K, which is weird. Oh, okay. I, I, huh. I don't. A very weird cat, um, but sort of, sort of an interesting, uh, an interesting case. So. Yeah. Had we not gotten Cooper, the uh, dog I wanted to get at the rescue we went to, we went to the Animal Welf Welfare League near us, mm. and there was this little fat beagle that oh, was, man. he was over our weight limit, he was like six years old, his owner was like this really old guy who had passed away like a month and a half ago, and he'd oh. been in the shelter ever since, and I was like, I want that one, I want that one, and it was like 35 pounds, and our association would not let us get it, and the Animal Welfare League would not let us get it because we had the thing that said 15-pound weight limit. Lame. 
Yeah. Well, oh, the problem God. with Scuttle is he had been in the shelter for about uh, about a year and then had yeah. gotten um, adopted. And then six months later, his old owner passed away. And uh, then he had been in the shelter for about six months. And it's like, just stop telling me sad stuff. Just give me yeah. the damn cat. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Uh, so it's like you. I already said yes, so you don't have to guilt yeah, me anymore. Yeah, you're just twisting the knife. You've already stabbed me. <laughs> this is my interaction with a cat this week. I don't know if you, if you guys can check out the video there. Yeah. This is Donnie's cat. I'm a big fan of you. Every, every time I come over, I have to deal with this. Wow, that's a fat cat. That is a fat cat. The thing, it, it follows me around the house. Oh, that's a cute cat. That is. Oh, it gets better. We haven't got to the action yet. Oh, the licking business? Oh, yeah. No. Oh, you see, there's a bear hug. Yeah, going to get chompy on you here in a second. It, it's coming. Wait, here comes the back legs. Uh -oh. oh. And then it'll start mule kicking me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the cat loves you. There, 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 there it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, now it's getting pissed. But the thing is, is that it gets mad. It does. It bites like a dog. Like it just puts its teeth on you. Yeah. It's, just, uh, okay. We actually asked the vet about that today because um, Scuttle actually does that, and they say uh, she said that that happens when they're like either too amped or like too stressed out. When they mm. kind of they don't really they don't get put any <laughs> teeth into it. They just kind of touch you. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of unfortunate though, because Scuttle, I think, was abused at some point, so he's still a little skittish of, like, what we're gonna do. Yeah. <sighs> oh man. Okay. But yeah, so a cat follows me around, and like, I went over yesterday because Donnie was having a a fire, so I figured I'd stop over and say hi. How you doing? And I walk through the house, and the patches follows me right around to the back door. And all of a sudden, he gets up on the on the the screen door. Like, I was like, what is with this thing? Man, super fan. All right. But apparently um, that cat doesn't do that to anybody else but me. It's my well, cohort. Now you get to take it home. That's my lure of the animal. Uh, all right, you guys ready to uh, start this thing? Uh, we're recording it would appear already, right? so. Yep. We, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it. All right. I no, just had not. the Twitch the Twitch chat over top of it. Oh, yeah. All right, let's get started in <clears> three, <throat> two, one. Welcome back to another episode of That Video Game Podcast. I'm your host, Boston. Going around the room, we've got Knobs. What's up? And the Hannah. Hi. Uh, let's just dive right into it with Knobs. What have you been playing? Hey, I'll take a wild guess of what I've been playing. Some... Battle Battle War, BF <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it's pretty much like our game. Like our, our, it's definitely been my decompression game because this week has just been horrendous on every level. Yeah, for all um, three of us, unfortunately. Yep. Yeah, it work and other shenanigans. It's just, it's just been nice to go home and just, and just shoot my friends. It's got that. <laughs> like, the, you know, that's what I love about. Uh, I've been using Rogue Legacy for that this week, where it's just kind of a game, I know this game. You know, like, if I could really easily play Symphony of the Night, I'd play that. It's kind yeah. of a comfort food game week. Yeah. Well, it's it's one of those things where you just kind of, kind of can hop in, there's always someone on your friends list playing this game, which I find amazing at this point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, I just hop into some random dude's game and just go in, light some fools up, take some points, earn some XP. Shoot some people. And... Just have all around good time. Try and take some tags. Oh, whose tags did I get? I forgot. I think I might have got Toxic Jokers. I don't remember. Dang it. Ah, it doesn't matter. Well, I forgot to mention something that happened last week that was kind of ridiculous. So I was in this one spot just kind of camping around the corner just a little bit, waiting for something, and then all of a sudden I got killed Dang in me. action. Hmm. I got smashed by a supply crate. Like, awesome. I literally... I got, That's fantastic. I got swamped in Battlefield. You got smushed. Like, it just, out of nowhere, it's like, what the? How did There's this happen? Around. And I hear everyone else just cackling because I had just got smashed by a supply crate. That should be an achievement. And I was, 
I only stopped at that place. I think it's an achievement if you kill someone as a commander. If you oh, do nice. That. But it, it's oh, it's dumb. It was dumb. Jeez. But anyway, that was in last week's uh, shenanigans. This week's shenanigans, Monday Night Game Night, is turned into we're now getting back to eight plus players every week. Wow. All running around, hammering each other, and literally just hunting every everyone on our group. Yeah. That's it's what it's turned into. It doesn't matter what the score of the game is. It doesn't matter how many kills or end around game you have. It's did you get somebody's tags or not? Yeah. That's the true game. Well, last night we were broken up. We were it was like every like we were playing some of the DLC maps and then Urgent joined us and he didn't have any DLC D- DLC maps. So I'm like, "All right, well, I'll hop over. I'll do a quick match and jump into someone else's server." I jump in that server and then everyone else joins on the other side. And they're like, well, why don't you come over here? I was like, no, I'm captain of the team. I'm not leaving. Yeah. Like, I, like, I was the first one. I was the OG in this server. You guys move over. Then it turned down to, uh, I think I killed Urgent really quickly. And then, uh, and then I think Toxic Joker was the next one. And then, and they're like, all right. Whoever kills who first, and then then Tom Gamer kills me. I was like, you can't. Ki- I'm I'm team captain. You ca- I can't move. <laughs> <laughs> so it turned into uh, to me against the three of them with uh, with Donnie, and then I don't think it was toward the end. And oh yeah, Toxic Joker did get my tags this week. I think it was a gift one too. Like I spawned right in front of him. Like uh, I was no chance. I couldn't defend myself. Man. But. It is just it's it's a laugh riot. Like we just it's just the dumb conversations we get into. It's just always a good time. Mm-hmm. Not exactly PC for this show, but sure, that's true. It's it's, it's, it's let's just say eighteen and above type of conversation. It's rated AO. Yes, it Indeed. is T eighteen <laughs> or whatever. Peggy eighteen. Peggy what? NC seventeen. Sure. Um, yeah, so it's a great time, and we need more. And, oh, my God. That Tox brings it up a good point. So Donnie has this routine, because he always plays a sport class, so he has a big ammo pack and claymores. He drops more claymores than anyone I know. The second he spawns, it doesn't matter where he is, boom, claymore's down. <laughs> At some point, I will run over and get killed by a claymore, and Donnie's probably not within four or 500 meters of me. I. <laughs> Or, oh man, this is the I remember one time like I turned the corner, I had a nice triple kill, and I just start running. Dumb me for running over Donnie's body because I literally got blown up by a claymore the <laughs> second I. Just... <laughs> just a nice little baking in the oven. Every time I get killed by a claymore, it's always Legend Thirty Three, and I'm like, <laughs> oh! every time. Oh! And they they'll know because I. I'm, Big mf comes flying out of my mouth every time. <laughs> uh, it's it's infuriating. There's little stuff like that happening all the time in this game that just ah, uh, it's we we're so used to how each other how we all have this like our own little play styles and stuff and oh man, it the, some especially when we're on other sides like it's it's the friendliest, most brutal competition we could probably do. Jeez. Like literally, just if we could drink keg uh, beer out of their skulls, we would to make it more <laughs> humiliating for them. But alas, we can't. And the Donnie's little gifts, the claymores, are everywhere in that game. Like, I my 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 thing is that the thing that I've been doing more and more often is I got rid of the guided RP or er, the guided stinger missile. I always carry. So I always had the stinger and the M2 slam mine. So I'm, I got air and 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 uh, and vehicles kind of covered with with um, with my equipment as I'm running around as my engineer class. I switched to the the rocket propelled grenade, like the big old RPG, the terrorist looking weapon. It looks like it's made out of wood and and has a funnel on front of it. The Duke 3D RPG. Y- exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that dumb looking thing. So. I've been rolling around with that, and like now, like I would just I'm dropping candy. Like I, it's like M2. Like as soon as I spawn, three M2 mines right on the ground, right in a roadway. Because apparently these people have not learned yet. Don't drive on the roads. Yeah. They're mine. <laughs> I mean, every time I spawn, but boom, 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 
and probably within two minutes, I get like a double kill because two idiots are driving down the road together. <laughs> like, I love blowing up uh, the Duke brothers as much as possible. <laughs> especially especially if I see a vehicle in the distance running at me, I'll drop three mines in front of me and just back up. And just let them just watch boom, it boom, happen. Boom, boom, boom. Just watch it happen right in front of me. And I'm like, yeah. Now I've learned this new trick that I've been doing is like I'll run up on it, I'll sneak up on a tank, get all sneaky, I'll throw a mine on it, run away, shoot my gun so the turret starts turning my way, and I have my RPG out. The second <laughs> he sees me, I shoot an RPG and it blows up. Uh, it does the splash damage on the explosive damage on the RPG, and it blows up my mine at the same time. So he has enough time to see me just sit there giggling and grinning. <laughs> <laughs> That's been my new little bit of joy. Like, it's so much funny. He can't take me out with just a rocket launcher. That's what he thinks. That's what he thinks. <laughs> he's, our, he's rigged. He's doomed, and he has no idea. <laughs> uh, especially, like, that RPG is pretty powerful, too. Because I've gone, uh, like, if there's somebody running around the map with an AA gun shooting dudes on the ground is the worst... Like, that thing should not shoot below a 45, below the horizon. Yeah. Like, that should be its limit. It should be able to tick down a little bit. That's designed to shoot the sky. Yeah. And there are, there are idiots that run around in that thing all day because it has, it's, I mean, it mows dudes down, like, real fast. So I go out of my way and hunt them, three RPGs, and, like, I'll do the thing where I'll sit there. I'll shoot him, old circle strafe, get to the next side, shoot him, circle strafe, get to the next side. And I see his gun trying to track me because he can't just quite move fast enough. Oh, and I'm laughing the best. Oh, it's so good. It's like, it's so satisfying. Between that and shooting down helicopters are, might be some of the most satisfying things in that game. Taking yeah. down helicopters in almost any game is really just a satisfying moment. Yeah. Well, uh, a couple, there's two, a, well, the Javelin. Like, there's nothing that really one shots a helicopter in Battlefield anymore. The Javelin used to, I remember that in 3, that you have someone as a spotter and he locks onto a helicopter, your Javelin mission, missile will hit him. And usually a one shot a, a helicopter. The Stinger is at least three rounds to put a helicopter down. And by that time, they had already jumped out, so you don't get credit for the kill or the vehicle death. Mm. Which is a bummer. Lame. I blew even up a the helicopter, I should get something. Yes, 20 something. bucks maybe? I don't know. Flip me a quarter. I don't care what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Two pence per... per give, me the, give me the scrap weight. Come on. <laughs> Two pence per copter? <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, but it is cool when you actually do it. When you catch that one that's been getting beaten up, and it, it's, it's flying real low, and you're like, ha, boom, oh, that's so good. Oh, I'm so happy I just put you down. Nice. Go bird hunting. And it's cool. The uh, the other game I've been playing this week has been a lot more Power Star Golf. Mm. I, I had thought I had figured this game out, and then it just uh, it it it's, it broke it off in me like twice. And there is a like, real serious uh, uh, difficulty curve there too, where you're like, oh man, this first course that was that was a lot of fun. That was great. The second course is just sort of like, okay, well, welcome to hell. Oh, it's it's welcome brutal. To demon like, land. I was playing a, a match, or a, a five-hole. Actually, I was doing this right before, right before I recorded. So you're fresh off a, a cursing spree that I just went through. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was. I was playing match play against the magician guy, and oh, man. and so like it was this long dog leg par five. We got to go over the water this way because the wind was blowing off, so I couldn't take the shortcut to the island. So I had to play it the long way. And so I get my two shots. I'm over on the safe side. I just gotta get. I can get up and down for birdie, no problem. So this, uh, John so this guy gets, comes in. This guy, th yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he looks like. <laughs> He's that real like pencil mustache. I just always think of John Waters. That is so perfect. That's so perfect. John Waters with with a head of hair. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only difference. It's circa nineteen seventy two, Mr. Waters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's <laughs> John Waters well coiffed. That's too good. In a nice tight plaid suit. Oh with yeah. Hips, it, that with thing hips, is hipster skinny jeans. That thing is tailored. Oh, it is, yeah. It is perfect for every contour of his swing. Anyway, 
So he goes over, like, and he's, he's following the same path I am. He takes his shot, clips a tree, goes in the water. I'm like, oh, nice. dude, this is, in, this is in a bag. His next shot, his fourth shot over the water, carrying, wind in the face, goes right in for birdie. I'm like, what? what? <laughs> I was, how? Magic. I, I had two, two holes backed up on this, so it turned into a dormy the next hole, and I was like, oh, come on. Got that John like, Waters, I can't win for losing. Like I'm playing right, and I still get boned by this guy's shot. <laughs> Man, oh, that was infuriating. But I, I do like I like I save up 60k for just the. I'm not buying any of these lesser pack of no, clubs no. and stuff. I'm only buying the big boy. No, you want the big because big packs. Because those are the only ones that really are worth it at all, is from what I can see. You know what's crazy about that game? So for anybody that hasn't played it so you get like uh in-game currency and you buy card packs and stuff yeah what's crazy is they have a whole like loot system in the game in yeah. loot rarity where it's like oh man i totally got a, a purple uh driver and that thing is gonna be sick <laughs> oh yeah i why? just why you know you know why because it's really rewarding because you open <laughs> one of those 60k things 60k isn't super hard to get in that game but you yeah. open okay. one of those and it's just like two green balls pop out and like a purple putter and a blue driver and you're like oh oh yeah this is the yeah, best like, game ever. like i just i mean i got an orange putter or an orange not an orange putter i got an orange uh driver it's like the, the solid gold drivers that has got super power zero accuracy and <laughs> and the other like the the other stats are really good but the zero accuracy is driving me bananas <laughs> Because I'm back into the rhythm of the, the, the three-click swing. Yeah. And I'm like, boom, boom, boom. Perfect shot. Why is it going off to the right? <laughs> like, See you guys later. <laughs> oh, it's just like... It's like, it's like me playing golf in real life. Like, yeah, I, I know I'm going to draw the ball. So I'll aim off to the right, and I'll hit that sucker dead nuts right into the woods. Yeah. And I'm like... Oh. <laughs> I really wish that that game would come to other platforms. I think that would do really well on the Vita, and I think it'd do really well on PC. So PC doesn't have a lot of, like, arcade golf games. No, it doesn't. They're all no, silly it, games. It, and it scratches that itch yep. really well. Yep. I, it's, it's, it, Scratching that Hot Shots Golf itch. It, it's, yeah. It's, it's total Hot Shots Golf. I mean, it, it kind of has a little bit of... Uh, a feel of outlaw golf in it a little bit without yeah. the, the oh, stupidness in that game golf. but as far as the you know, the zaniness the crazy courses i want to unlock that china dude the chinese dude the zen master golfer guy oh, yeah i haven't unlocked him. i i think he will be my dude yeah because right now i'm just using the astronaut because i want to go to the moon i use that but. science lady because she has that power where it pulls the ball towards the hole yeah yeah I've seen that a lot. Yeah. I don't Man, know. I gotta, I gotta plug my Xbox One in again and start playing that thing. That it's a lot good. of fun, and I love beating people's records. Like for no, like, oh, I know it's... there's no notification on their end, which would be the best thing that that game could do is to needle people to play it and compete. I thought there but... was one. I think it's on the crawl on the bottom of the screen on the main menu. Oh, is it really? I think so, yeah, because when oh. I was first playing, like, the day it came out, a bunch of people were beating my records, and I was like, I gotta, nope, this uh, this <laughs> will not stand. This, yeah. Uh -huh. Hold my calls. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I'm really, like, it's almost got, it's, it hooks into me, like, nonstop right now. Yeah. Because if I'm not playing Battlefield, I'm playing that. Yeah, if you have an Xbox One, go get Power Star Golf. It's really good. I mean, that has really pulled all my attention away from Marvel superheroes at this point. Or, yeah, Lego Marvel. Curses. Like, <laughs> and this was just an impulse, but I hear Donnie just keep talking about it. Like, he's like, what are you doing? I was like, I'll play Power Star Golf. All right, all right whatever. Uh, well, Donnie, what are you doing? I'm playing Power Star Golf. Oh, God, all right, I got to see what this is. <laughs> Fine, I'll get it. You know what? I'm, I'm happy with it. I mean, that's a good purchase. Yeah. It's not like, not like Strider where it's so hard, I just feel like breaking stuff. But. Yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much pretty much it. Just golf and battlefield. And all right, Hannah, what about you? Uh, well, like Nob said, stuff's been happening this week, and I've uh, been firmly planted in front of a computer doing every everything but gaming. Yeah. 
Uh, so almost all of my gaming this week was on the Vita, and it was almost entirely the Swapper, uh, which is just man, that's a fantastic puzzle game. I meant to start that's, that this week, and I ran out of time. That is a great puzzle platformer. Um, there's a whole story I think I tried to touch on it last week about the difference between the mind and the brain and the difference between the soul and the body. It went over my head. I'm not paying close enough attention to the story. Yeah. I'm sure it's very deep and it's very meaningful. But man, are these puzzles sweet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's really my main concern here. Uh, there was a few I, I did end up... I, I was so close to the end, there was one or two puzzles I was just sort of like, okay... My brain hurts. I need to just look up how this is done. And some of these puzzles, like, I'm so close to the solution with my just random messing around. If I had just taken it, like, one step further, I would have solved it. Yeah. That's, like, the worst feeling when you go and you actually look up the solution because you, you feel like you don't have time for this. And you're like, oh, if I would have just... Oh, I need yeah. to do, like, one... There's a, one puzzle in Portal 2 that always does that to me. It's when yeah. the very last puzzle, when you have all of the different goop colors. Oh, okay. And you have to, like, shoot yourself all the way up through, like, that vent system. I get oh, yeah. almost to the end. I have, like, one more thing to do. And I'm like, I don't, I don't think I want yeah. It's like, oh, it's right above me. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Yeah. There's a couple moments like that in Portal Two where you're like, "Where do I have to?" Oh, and you see like just a little flash of white, like hundred yards away, straight up. Yeah, and you're like, <laughs> "Oh, right." Yeah. <laughs> Bink. Cool. Oh, right. The story Don't... is having me go up. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, that that one with uh, when you were in that area with the old looks like an old elevator shaft where you got to shoot the goop from the bottom up to yeah. the top over the side and you got to do the, the the loopy loop to launch yourself and I'm like oh this is too much my brain yeah it's so my good brain. though uh, and I played a bunch more Rogue Legacy ooh me too um, and this game just keeps getting better and I keep getting worse at it uh, I finally beat the forest boss. Oh, Ponce de Leon? Yes, yeah. the giant skull. Yep. Yeah. Um, I ha I got to the tower boss, and I didn't beat him, and I forgot to lock down the castle, and I got really mad at myself, because I was like, I'm just going to hop back in. Oh, it's gone. Curses. <laughs> yeah. But well, at like, least you had to make more money. Yeah, right? Um, I actually had a couple of really solid runs where I made, like, five grand just going through the castle, not even, like, finishing a boss or anything. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. Um... So the forest boss was it's really more of a patience game and if you've got if you're using a Hokage or you're using even a barbarian that can take the his like ads out in one swing you're pretty good yeah. like you're pretty much set um the problem i have with the tower boss is basically a giant fireball that leaves fireballs in its wake mm -hmm. uh which gets really frustrating cuz every time you're like oh i won't hit the fireball Oh, yeah, I didn't hit the fireball. I got hit by one of the giant spike balls that, you know, slams oh, throughout yeah. that level, too. Uh, so that's that's fun. Um, I'm thinking about not locking down the castle next time I restart because I'm trying to get to the tower boss, and the room, the biggest room I've seen in the tower so far is just an absolute beast to get through. Yeah. I've literally lost three or four characters just trying to get through that room. Yeah. So I'm just like, maybe I'll just sort of reset huh yeah it'd be nice or just and then sneak through that might be a better idea hey, i don't know just wait until you get to the fourth boss which is easily one of my least favorite bosses in games in probably the last five years oh wonderful it that is, sounds like it's gonna be it so much fun astronomically unfair uh yeah uh, but that's literally all I play. Like, I wish I had more to talk about with both of those games. Like, The Swapper is a phenomenal puzzle game on the level of Portal. You're sort of going up and down, and there's, like, gravity inversion, and you're making clones of yourself, and there's all these different colored lights that prevent you from either making a clone of yourself or swapping your controls to that clone, or, I'm sorry, your soul. Um, <laughs> it was... It was... If, <sighs> The story felt like something I would have like come up with when I was nineteen in an art school. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not... see Fedora Hannah, settle down. <laughs> yeah. But isn't our mind and our soul different, bro? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just oh. listen to my chakras. <laughs> 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 and it's not a bad I'm story. Sure, settle down, I'm working on my Reiki. <laughs> it's... <laughs> 
<laughs> it's got some interesting elements to it. It's just a little too high-minded for, uh, I think, a Vita sit-down-and-play game, you know? Yeah, sometimes sometimes some indie puzzle games get a little too much up their own butts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's sort of where this one falls. Yeah. Um, I think per- the, the perfect amount is Stealth Inc. Yeah. It's always been my favorite, because it's just like, yeah, it's a little spy guy. Yeah, oh, a- he died? We'll just clone another one. All right. Yeah, it's a puzzle game, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. That's that's pretty much all I've been playing. Uh, I finished my second playthrough of Rogue Legacy, and I think I'm kind of uh, putting that one to bed. Uh, Good call. C- certainly not getting the rest of those achievements uh, or trophies. Um, mm. I the boss you're on right now, the the skull fireball one, Alexander, I think. Yeah. Um, the uh, tell me his last name's Dumas. No, it's all so I didn't. It took me a while to realize um, what all the bosses are named after. Um, they're all named after other adventurers that have looked for the um, Fountain of Youth. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, so the you know dark version of him, the 240 level one, has mm-hmm. a wall of spikes in between you and him. Oh. Yeah. So it's this... Ew. It's horrible. Um, so it kind of blew through the second playthrough of that that wasn't too terrible once i started making a ton of money um yeah and that game is just really good and i don't want to i don't want to hate it because i feel like if i would go through and i would get all the trophies i would mm-hmm. just hate that game um yeah i can see that the 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 allowance of error on those sort of like dark bosses is just i think a little too tight so fair enough. And that game's great. Everyone should go get it. Yeah. And PC version is probably like three dollars, so you don't yeah. even have to have a Sony platform. But it is great. You don't. It does help though. It, it plays great on the Vita. Yeah. Um. So I, I played. Okay, I played a game I really, really hate. Like at the core of my being. Oh, I'm so excited oh, for this. Oh, what is it? Hohokam. Oh, really? I Okay, so this is a game I should love because it feels like it feels like someone took um kind of the the zaniness of um Katamari Damacy okay and took the art style of Loco Roco and kind of mushed the two together. Ooh. But the problem is, and I don't mind experimental games. I don't mind games that don't hold your hand. Yeah. But this game, there's no, there's no one holding your hand. There's no one in the state to hold your hand. Like it, it's, <laughs> and the beginning of it is very much this. It the beginning felt very much like an art experiment, where it's sort of okay. like, oh, you got this like worm thing and. You can go around the world, and we're not going to tell you how to do anything. It's like, yeah, great. But I'm stuck in this game because I don't know what you want me to do. Mm. And then once you finally figure out how to get out of this beginning area, um, the instructions for the game are literally five pictures with no text, (laughs) no explanation, no nothing. And it's sort of like, great, I think they're showing me how to open up further areas in the game. But I don't really know, because as of so far, there's been zero text. So, I'm like, alright, maybe that's just this weird tutorial area. Let me, let me, let me give this game a chance. I spent like $15 on it. Yeah. (laughs) When you get into the game, each level, area, section, painting, I don't know, um, (laughs) has a different objective. Okay. Of which you have no idea what they're looking for. Ooh. So I got into this one area where it looks like there's a party that's on kind of multiple levels of this thing that kind of looks like a cake. Okay. And I would go down to this area, and when I would go near these three guys, one of them would hop on my back. And mm-hmm. I could bring them around, and I'd go to other people, and they'd start cheering. And that seemed to be it. And I could bring them up to the top area, 
I eventually found like five minutes later. And then something would happen, but I didn't really know what. So the, the whole objective of that was find which one of these three people is the groom for this bride, then mm-hmm. ring the bell to start the ceremony, and then the level's over. What? But how, like, this other area, you're flying through, it's a, a large white background, and there are these kind of large water-filled, uh, kind of look like bubbles. Yeah. And there's a fisherman at the very beginning of it. Hmm. And I had no idea what to do. You could go through all these areas and fish will follow you, but they won't if you hop out of the water. And eventually, if you get to the end of this area, you find a mermaid and you have to drag her back to the fisherman by kind of expanding all of these areas to keep her in water. Hmm. And the thing that eventually broke me was, is this huge area that seems like it's kind of a water park. Okay. And all these people will hop on your back. But mm-hmm. they'll always stop off at these different places. Like, they'll go down a water slide, or they'll get changed into bathing suits, or they'll go get an ice cream, or stuff like that. But I, I could never figure out what the the eventual goal was. Like, I'd even yeah. say, okay, I'm going to take this one dude, change into a swimsuit, go down the water slide, get some ice cream, try and go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. No, he just wants to go do these things over and over again. Oh, weird. So, screw that game. <laughs> like, like you... See, I would, I would have had a problem with taking the mermaid to the fisherman, because that just sounds like a bad idea. Yeah, yeah I mean... It sounds like something bad's going to happen after that. Yeah, I, like, so my thing is, it, I, I can appreciate a game that allows you to discover certain things. I, yes. But I feel like... Maybe at least for me, and maybe I don't, I'm not that creatively minded. Maybe I don't appreciate the art of it and the Tycho soundtrack. But I need just something. Just, I, I don't have to, I don't want to go through like a two hour Zelda tutorial to find out how to, how to travel between worlds or pieces of art or whatever. But I need yeah. at least a little something, even if I've been. Um, stuck in a in an area for a couple minutes. Mm-hmm. Just so, can you flash something you they're supposed to do? Yeah. And of course, all of the trophies are secret, so I of have no are. idea what uh, am I? Are there? Uh, does this have an end? I I, I don't even. It's <laughs> I cannot recommend it because I I feel like <laughs> I feel like if they had given some more. Uh, objective, some so a little bit more clarity. I think yeah. I could enjoy it like I did Katamari, because Katamari yeah. is such a weird game, and it's it's all about kind of discovering each environment and kind of figuring out the best way to to tackle the challenge. Oh yeah. But they had a a very clear and very simple objective of grow your Katamari. Yes. And in this game. How am I supposed to know that I'm going to f- have to find the right groom for this bride and then ring this bell above them? Like, it's just, it's a little too <laughs> abstract. <laughs> Context! Oh, yeah. Find the, find the guy in the fancy outfit and then talk to his dad. That seems to work. Yeah, I, it's just, it, it's all kind of, I get it, and it's a great looking game, and it's smooth as hell, and it's 1080p, and it's yeah. it's a beautiful piece of... It's a beautiful piece of art. But I it don't also, want to play it. It also sounds like a good PSA for not letting your coders take hallucinogenics while you're developing. Yeah. yeah. And it's weird because this is Santa Monica Studio. Mm. Like, they make really great games. They do. What this the? is just uh. really weird. So, mm. I, I'm, I mean, honestly, it's just not a game for me. It seems, if it clicks with you, I'm sure this game is fantastic. Mm. It is just like oil and water there's probably yeah. one of those levels in there too the <laughs> it's the salad Dawn. dressing level yeah brought to you, brought by, you by good seasons <laughs> <laughs> um but i did play a game that i absolutely did not expect to enjoy and that's road not taken oh okay um, it took me probably about two hours to figure out why this game looks so familiar it's made by a company called spry fox and they made um, Triple Town. 
Um, What's that one? The it's a mobile uh, puzzle game where you're like putting the bushes together to make houses to make bears and putting all those oh, together. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so it it eventually struck me because they have those bears in this game. Nice. Um, so what this is is a semi roguelike puzzle game. Um, and I say semi roguelike because when you die, you don't go back to the beginning of the game. It sends you back a couple of years. Okay. Let me rewind. So, the the main conceit is there's this village that um, their whole economy is based around these berries that um, that are at their best every winter. So okay. every winter, all the children in the village go to get the berries from this horrible, scary, wolf-infested forest. And every year, a couple of them don't come back. Mm-hmm. So you're a ranger, and your job is to go in there and recover as many of them as you can. Um, so the only thing you have to do is save half of the children every year. Okay. Um, you get two chances to fail. On your second chance, it puts you back a couple of years. Or if you die in the forest, it sets you back a couple of years. Um, so like if you get up to year five, then if you die, you typically go back to year three. Um, so thankfully it's not like, well, start this game all over again, yay. Um, what's really crazy about it is it's it's also kind of like a roguelike where every time you move, everything in the environment moves. So mm. it's it's tile-based without having tiles. And oh, it's, that's weird. It is this super... It's the free PS4 game uh, this month, so anybody with a PS4, go just go grab it. Yeah. Um, it is hardcore. Like, this is a puzzle game through and through. This is one of those ones where you go to a new room and you just kind of need to sit there for a couple seconds to say, all right, if I move, all this stuff's going to move. All right, there's a couple kids in here. I can save them by going this way. You know, it's that really cool, um, really... It's great because it's not, you know, a platforming puzzle game, which is fine, but I feel like lately we've gotten so few of these kind of really hardcore kind of real thinkers puzzle games um, yeah where you can't just go by um you can't go by instinct you really have to plan um and the whole game is 15 years and the highest i've gotten was year 10 and that Mm. was tough um it eventually starts giving you like trap rooms um starts messing with you a little bit Um, really this game is really great. I, I, it is hard as hell, and I cannot stop playing it. I think because it's really tough. Because mm. I, I, you look at a room and you're like, okay, I, I know, I, I know you can do this. They have not given you an impossible room. That's good. How am I going to do this? <laughs> and also, I'm running out of energy, and I have one more kid to save. Otherwise, mm. I lose the game. Ugh. And it's, it's, it's so good. I, I just. It's incredible that Triple Town, for anybody that hasn't played it, I really encourage you to do it. I think it's even on Steam now. Um, it's a really simple um, kind of match three to combine to a thing puzzle game. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like this was kind of the natural extension of that in making a game that's much more difficult, but you you can either spend 20 minutes or you can spend three hours. Yeah. Just kind of puzzling through this game. Um, the only thing that I think is really unfortunate is I really wish it had like a save and quit to menu option. Oh. There's no quit option at all. So it's that sort of thing where it's like, I hope it's saved because I have to go do something and I have to close the app. So fingers crossed, I guess. Um, but everybody with a ps4 go grab it um give it a shot i mean it it has a really great tutorial um it it never really punishes you unfairly um but it's gonna be pretty tough Um, yeah so it's worth a shot for free at the very least yeah for sure um and the last game uh the last game I uh, played this week is I started, um, I purchased and started Divinity Original Sin uh, on PC. Oh, nice. I've been hearing nothing but good about it. Everybody's that. been talking about it. Yeah. Um, 
man, that game is super great. I played for about an hour, hour and a half, and that is a game that came straight out of the early 90s. Like, that is a computer RPG. Like, that's yeah. that's an RPG back when they were called CRPGs. Yeah. Uh, like, this is, a, this is a game that would have come out alongside Fallout 2 on, like, seven CDs, and it would have been... <laughs> Like, it feels like a game that everybody would have been like, oh, man, I just, I played so much Divinity Original Sin when I was in high school. I just, yeah. that was a game I had for, like, a year, and I just, I played every, I found everything in the game. You know, it very much feels like that. And it's, and it, it feels really great to play an RPG like that. It, it feels really great to have a game that um, doesn't expect you to be an idiot. Like, it doesn't handhold you it doesn't it, it, it gives you tutorials and it, it 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 gives you a little bit of an easier time at the beginning where you're f- figuring out the battle system okay. but pretty quickly you find a boss and he has two ads and if you don't take that dude down you're going to die and you're gonna mm. get a game over yeah um and it's it's kind of refreshing to play a game like that again, where it just it has expectations that you're going to read everything in the game, and you're mm-hmm. going to take your time, and you're going to learn the game alongside it, and you're going to get and in, you're going to get something out of investing your time and investing your energy. Um, and I think that's really I think that's really great. I feel like we haven't had a an RPG like that in quite a while. I know yeah. I know everybody always points to like, oh Skyrim is so not <laughs> Skyrim's pretty easy. You're not there for the battle system. You're there for no. exploring the world. Yeah, if you're in a if you are in a um an Elder Scrolls game for the battle system, you're playing the wrong series. Yeah, you should not should not be playing that. <laughs> and that's what I feel like is kind of interesting about this game is it seems like it's invested in both. That's good. Um, it, it the battle system is really great. It's, um, I think Mina on Pup said it the best. It's Fallout One, where basically Ooh. you have all these little bubbles and those are your action points. And attacking takes up four, so four bubbles are gone. And when you're out of them, your your turn is done. Nice. Um, and it has a you know the the move order on the top of the screen, um, and it's just it, even an hour in, it feels like a game that. Uh, if I had the time and I had like a day off, I would probably play that all day. <laughs> It'd be one of those one of those few games where you fire it up, or you would have fired it up in high school on the weekend, and you'd be like, "All right, great, I should probably take a break." Oh, it's dark out again. <laughs> yeah, I've been playing this for like twelve hours, and I did probably four quests. <laughs> um, and it's kind of nice. It's forty bucks on Steam. It's made. It was kickstarted. Um, it uh, seems like a really small team, and it's just, just a great game. I, it's kind of one of those games. Where I was like, yeah, it's probably not. Everyone's, oh god, everyone's so excited. About it. I bet it's gonna be great. It's pretty great. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, but that's all the games I've been playing. So let's I'll take a break. Cool. Sounds good to me. Oh man. Oh, god, my back hurts so bad. Yeah. What is this chair doing to me? Oh, all right. I'm gonna go grab a drink of water. So does anybody on the live stream want this hot sealed copy of Band Hero I have? Eh? Eh? <laughs> That's the nice thing, uh, the really nice thing about um, Amazon right now is I'm trying to oh. fill out uh, my 360 collection. So for $20, I was able to get The Club, uh, DJ Hero 1 and 2, and Band Hero all sealed. Like brand new really? copies. You know what? Uh, the club actually was kind of fun. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to playing it because I, I think people really misunderstood it. Um, that oh. it's just an arcade game. Yeah, it's a high score game. That's all that matters. Yeah, just a score attack arcade game. And I think people were expecting it to be this. I think it came out on the at the wrong time at the 360's life, where everyone was expecting. Hey. Some sort of either third-person shooter or yeah. open-world game. Say hi to the internet. Well, it just wasn't the. Hi, uh, puppy. 
Why are you holding me? It sucks. Oh, I want to run. He's so tiny. He's a tiny little guy. He is. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the club is just... I mean, it's a third-person shooter, but it's a confined finite area that you get to battle and, and link scores to. Keep pro tip: keep your eyes on the walls because there's always something to shoot that give you a little a little extra boost. Oh, nice! Whether it's mm. time or points or multipliers. Yeah, I, I just feel like they. I don't really know what went wrong there. I, I kind of think the same thing with Brutal Legend, where it was a marketing problem, and everyone what got we, it, and they're like, "Oh, what's what, this? What, what, what did I miss? Oh, the, oh, the, the club. club on the three sixty. Oh, okay. Well, it's you know it's funny because I think the action portion of the third person shooter got slowed down by Gears of War yeah, oh and yeah. this this is literally you run the entire you run and gun yeah mm. and everything that came out that, that last generation that was pretty much cover based you had the yeah. look and talk cover based game slow the pace down and that yeah. one was was f that let's go have some fun let's blow some stuff up yup all right, I'm ready for this next segment. Whatever you guys are. Yep. Who gets yeah, he's asleep this again on already. the top of your toes? It's so weird. That is super Sorry. weird. Like I have two. Like I don't let's see. Like it's a big toe. <laughs> toe cast. It's, it's it's. I'm not a contortionist. I'm just lanky. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's on top of my big, like on the top, like knuckle, like like right there, like this knuckle, on both my feet. I wonder if I got tiny shoes. That sounds likely. I don't have much of a choice in that, though. Yeah, yeah sort of slim pickings. Yeah, I'm I'm happy I have things to wear on my feet other than flip flops. Fair enough. Those suck in the winter, by the way. Oh. <laughs> All ready, you guys ready? Yeah. Yep. Let's do this. All right. Ready in three, two, one. Welcome back, everybody. We got releases. Tales of Exilia 2 for the PlayStation 3. PS Troops. Yep. That's right. Oh, Diablo 3 Ultimate Evil Edition for the PlayStation yes. 4 and XBO. I think that's also coming to... I know it's also coming to the PS3 and 360. Yeah. I mm -hmm. don't know if that's this week or not. So the current gen versions are sixty bucks, and the last gen versions are forty bucks. Yeah. Uh, nice. Quick PSA about those: um, Blizzard did put out a patch. You can pretty much uh, transfer your character from anything to anything, yep. except from PC to console. Right. So oh, I'm yeah. gonna transfer over my 360 characters and see how that goes. Mm-hmm. And I'm All super right. pumped for that. I have two copies coming next week, so hopefully nice. my fiance and I will. Enjoy another loot-based game. Yeah. That's the haps. Uh, Counter Spy for the PlayStation 4, PS Trips, and Vita. I don't really know what this game is about, but I really like the style, so I bought the I other that... three games for this <laughs> summer play thing for Sony, so, you know. Well, yeah, might as well you know, I was going to buy Ho-Hokum. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, well, I was going right. to say, I was just hoping it was Archer versus uh, Barry. Oh, that'd, that'd be great. Be great. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> What's that other berry? <laughs> is that how you crash your uh, wedding other berry? Yes, it is, bionic <laughs> berry. <laughs> <laughs> I love that show. It's Plants so vs. Zombies Garden Warfare for the PlayStation 4. Oh, I gotta pick that up. Yeah, I might pick that up whenever it gets cheaper. Um, I, I really want to play that game. That... Hmm. I, it looks like dumb fun. It's it's yeah. basically a multiplayer only Call of Duty with Plants vs Zombies, which is awesome. Yeah. There's Follow no single player for anybody that's that's that needs a single player. There is zero single player modes. It's multiplayer hmm. only. <laughs> Hotline Miami, Hotline Miami for the PlayStation Four. That's a I I I've never played sure. that game. Yeah, no, really either way. It just doesn't. I know it's supposed to be good, but something about it just really turns me off. Yeah, I just yeah. have no no ambition to play that. Yeah. Uh, and the golf club for PC and XBO. So I might be saying bye to Power Star Golf. Yeah, moving on up. <laughs> uh, it's coming to the PS4 as well later this month. Sweet. Uh, for some reason they they pushed it back. So. 
Money. Uh, all it's right, always let's, money. <laughs> let's move on to news stories. Let's talk about Gamescom 2014, which surprisingly was a much more exciting show than it usually is. Yeah. Um, so Microsoft was the uh, the first one out of the gate here, and let's just get Tomb Raider out of the way since mm-hmm. no one will shut up about it. Yeah. The Rise of the Tomb Raider, quote unquote, coming exclusively to the Xbox One. Um, nobody really knows whether that means forever or for holiday or whatever. Yeah, Cooper doesn't sound too happy about it. He's growling a little bit. Oh, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> he loves he loves the PS4, so you know. Well, yeah, he doesn't of course like he does. Um, I I think the reaction to this has been really, really, really funny. Um, it has been because everybody Square obviously was not happy with how Tomb Raider sold for the last game. It sold mm-hmm. a couple million units and it made money, but I think Square was expecting that to be kind of a runaway hit. Um, And I think looking back on that game, it seems like the first Tomb Raider's game was always marketing. That game just kind of landed, and it was like, oh, it's a new Tomb Raider? What the heck is... It's... What? Um, When you're a company, when when you're Eidos, when you're Square, and a console manufacturer is willing to give you money to help market and better develop your game, you're probably going to say yes. Yeah. So all these people that are like, oh, it sold so poorly. Well, I guess it'll do real well on Xbox One. Probably. Uh, It's sure not a system seller, but if you have an Xbox One, you're probably going to pick it up. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of it is they completely rebranded that entire franchise. And usually the first entry, everyone's, well, is it different or is it the same? So there's going to be a lot of people on the fence. And then all this fervor and us gushing over the the first one is going to make people buy the next one. Hopefully the next one will be better than the first one. Because the first one's good, and I genuinely Mm -hmm. really enjoy it, but it's not a great game. It doesn't revolutionize the third-person action genre. Um, and if Microsoft giving Square and Eidos money to help market and help develop it, then that kind of works out pretty well. Yeah. I'm money pro- you don't have to put in. I'm prob- I may not buy it on Xbox One. I haven't decided yet. I'd prefer to play it on PS4. Um, but, you know, it's it's... I think it's really starting to bother me about how ignorant the general gaming populace is to the fact that the video game industry is a business. If if they can get a ton of money to market the game and sell more copies through good marketing, mm-hmm. they will break even. And let's even give them the benefit of the doubt and say that the PS4 version isn't even done. And the PC version is even done. So it gives them more time to finish developing those while focusing on what, uh, you know, if you're listening to a lot of uh, developers, the um, the Xbox One is a little harder to program for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Toxic Joker says, what's that, Microsoft? You want us to hand us millions and millions to be a timed exclusive? No, thanks. Pretty yeah. much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you have a PS4 and you don't have an Xbox One, it's okay to be upset that a game you were looking forward to is not landing on your platform day and date. Which, by the way, yeah. is like 13, 14 months away. <laughs> but to say that you're going to boycott the that square or that franchise, you're, har- you're harming the franchise that you like. Yeah. And, and you're voting with your wallets in a way that is the opposite of what you really want. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry that Square is a business. They've been in business for like 35 years. I I think they know what they're doing at this point. Eidos has been in business for, what, 20-something? 25? Yeah. They they probably have that figured out, too. (laughs) Eidos was the one that pulled the plug on uh, Ion Storm. They definitely know what they're doing. Yeah, they they got some (laughs) stuff figured out. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that, that to me was... That, to me, was kind of a sad news story. And I think part of it was 
Microsoft trying to stick with the the party line, which was yeah. Tomb Raider Rise Tomb Raider Rise of the Tomb Raider is a Xbox exclusive for holiday 2015. And they were everyone was saying like, "Oh, is it timed exclusive?" and they would just repeat that line. Yeah. And I think Patrick Klepek from Giant Bomb brought it, said it the best where he's saying stop using the word exclusive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like this yeah. that me- that word does not mean anything in gaming anymore because you guys have mm-hmm. killed it. It's like, "Oh, exclusive, so it's only coming out on that platform." Yeah, in the first 6 months. Oh, so it's a That's timed not exclusive. exclusive. That's not that's not that word. <laughs> yeah. That's not what not, that word means. Someone hand them a dictionary. Yeah. Um, so that that's kind of a, the, the big bummer. Um, uh, the rest of their show was really Halo-focused. Yeah. Um, they showed the Halo channel, which is literally the name for the Halo channel. Um, if you really like Halo, that looks like a pretty cool thing. Um. They're going to have a Halo 5 Guardians beta from December 29th to January 18th, which is a really good time for people that are on, you know, Christmas break from a lot of stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, Digital pre-orders for Xbox One, which I think is not going in this firmware update, but probably the next one. Uh, That white uh, Xbox One bundle with Sunset Overdrive, which looks hot as hell. Um, And that's kind of it except for hey goat simulators coming to xbox one so <laughs> because why not yeah i hope it comes with a peripheral for the connect that's the uh the shepherd cane oh like, no. the big <laughs> um all right uh so that was kind of microsoft let's move on to sony here um they had a really weird conference um, they showed off Little Big Planet three in a really weird trailer. Uh, they showed Infamous First Light in a really great trailer. I'm mm. super pumped to uh, to play that. Yeah. Uh, Q Games is coming back uh, with the Tomorrow Ooh. Children. That was that really crazy like 1950s Eastern Bloc looking game. I don't really know much about that game. Um, Ninja Theory showed out their new game Hellblade, which basically looks like Heavenly Sword 2, um, mm, which means nice. I'm super pumped. Yeah. Um, the guy who made Thomas was alone showing off a new PS4 and Vita project with the name of which I forget, um, but looks okay. Alan was alone. Yes. <laughs> um, DayZ is headed to PS4, which. That's must, interesting. Must have been what Sony was talking about when they were talking about early access. Because mm-hmm. um, if you're going to get an early access game, you get DayZ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't want to get the general pop in there. Yeah. Because it's going to be bad. Yeah. Um, uh, just talked a little bit about Destiny. First expansion coming in December. Nice. Uh, they showed a great trailer for Shadow of Mordor, that crazy Lord of the Rings game that actually looks pretty good. It looks Assassin's weird. Creed Mordor. Yeah, it looks. Yeah, I don't know. Like everything, like what is this? And then I watch a video. I'm like, ah, okay, okay, I could, I could play that. That, 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 that looks, looks okay. I mean, does it? Does it? Does, can it not be Lord of the Rings thing? Maybe just some other blah 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 fantasy yay yeah thing. But uh. Uh, they showed a quick Metal Gear Solid Five trailer, which has Snake hiding in a bunch of boxes that unfold into. Uh, guards or pretty ladies or he just puts a PS4 box on his head. Nice. So, glad to see Metal Gear Solid is back. Mm-hmm. Um, they, there was a teaser for a uh, new PS4 game PT, mm. um, which if you finished that interactive trailer, which is basically just a demo, um, it was announced that um, Guillermo del Toro and uh, oh God, what is his name? Hideo Kojima? Yeah, Hideo Kojima are making a new Silent Hill game. Which sounds crazy. Have you seen anybody play that PT? No. It no. is easily the most frightening thing that I have watched. Nevertheless, wow. play. If I, I love it, me some Silent Hill. I You should play PT then. It's free. Right, I think I want to do that. It is simultaneous. It is, I think... It's the first thing that I've watched someone play where I've felt creeped out. 
Like, mm-hmm. legitimately, like, shivers up your spine. Where it's like, no. Uh, I don't, no, thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> that looks... I'm. That's... I really wish they would pick a different name for the game. Because right now it's <laughs> Silent Hills. That's a really dumb name. That's a super dumb name. That would be great if they would not use that name. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I like um, that. I like that the uh, Joker said it. It's Silent Hill. I'll make you crit your pants. Exactly. <laughs> um. Uh, they showed off uh, Until Dawn, which is a game I completely forgot about. Um, and basically, it looks like, um, it looks like an '80s slash '90s slasher horror film that you get to play. Nice. Uh, I get. I get down with that. It looks pretty. It looks pretty cool. Um, it showed another trailer of for Drive Club. Hey, that game still looks really great. What a surprise! Yeah, uh, Michael An- Michel Ancel showed off Wild, some sort of weird. Hey, let's play with a wolf game. I hmm. don't know what. Uh, House Sweet, it links up with the Sheep Simulator, and it gets weird. Yeah, <laughs> uh, House Mark showed off their new twin stick shooter, Alienation. Um, nice. Which looks pretty cool. It looks a lot like um, uh, Smash TV. Ooh. Okay. Um, so that could that could be pretty okay. Um, and then they announced this big thing for the PS4 update 2.0, which is you can have friends join games that they join games with you if even if they don't own that game. Um, so they were giving an example of. You want to play with one of your friends across the country, and they don't have that game. Just invite them to your game, and they'll just start playing that game with you. Very cool. Um, it's come out since that there may be an hour-long restriction on that, but yeah, that's okay. Because if that game is pretty cool, then maybe your friend should buy it. Yeah. Um. I, I can't think of a better sales tactic. Yeah. Let them try, try it till they fall in love with it and then say, oh, wait, you got to buy it. Yeah, dude. let Come them on. play this game with their friends. That's a pretty good selling point. Um, and the kind of surprising and unsurprising bummer about it is no Vita news. Um, yeah. I know a lot of people are really upset about that, but hey, guys, the Vita doesn't sell, and it sure doesn't sell in Europe. <laughs> so yeah, that's true. they're not going to talk about uh, the Vita at at Gamescom, so mm. sorry, sorry Fair poor Vita. It you can cross by everything on there. Yeah, I have to say the one thing uh, about the new Silent Hill, like Guillermo del Toro, awesome, Hideo Kojima, awesome. Uh, no Akira Yamaoka music. Yeah, if that's not a thing, that will be a real bummer. Yeah, well, he resigned from Konami forever ago. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, that sucks. Uh, oh well. Yeah, that was kind of <laughs> half the magic of those games was just, man, that music he made is just that's some super tough creepy. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, you know, I'm kind of hoping that those two can kind of revitalize the Silent Hill franchise because lately it has had a lot of problems. So. Fingers. Well, it's been out of the limelight for so long. I mean, well, the bad part is they've been making a lot of games. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just they've been bad enough that we don't speak of them. Uh, that last one I played for what the 360 was the first one that came out. And I like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I don't, yeah I don't I'm care. good. Thanks. <laughs> uh, next news story here announced uh, also at Gamescom: uh, Metal Gear Solid Five, Ground Zeroes, and The Phantom Pain coming to Steam. Woo! Um, so that is. That That's is good news. Pretty surprising. Um, I yeah. Don't, I don't think anyone expected that. There's no release date, um, of course. Um, yeah. But this is the uh, the second Metal Gear Solid game to come to PC. Uh, they put out MGS2 for Windows at some point. I don't know if that was uh, some sort of weird emulation. That's um, super weird. But, Didn't uh, Rising come out for PC as well? Yeah, but that's not really yeah. the main line. <laughs> That's something else. It totally is. Yeah. It's not MGS canon. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and the last news story I have here from uh, from Gamescom is Bioware announced their new game, Shadow Realms. 
Um, and it's basically a five-person online tabletop RPG mm-hmm. um, where one person is not really a dungeon master, but kind of your Battlefield 4 commander. Um, yeah. And then the other four people are doing, you know, dice rolls and standard tabletop RPG stuff. It sounds like it's very similar to that Fable Legends game. Yes, it does. Yeah, Which, that was the first thing I thought. I was like, okay, I can get down with that. Okay, there's two of those now. Hmm. Yeah, I, I've i been waiting for this since they announced the Wii U. That per, that's just going to be perfect for both of these games, and it's not going to come out on, on a, neither one's going to come out for it. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's all the news stories I have. Uh, it was basically just Gamescom this week, so let's move on to... Oh, uh, let's head up Twitter. All right. Uh, let's up, scroll over here. Many Derek's writes, Many Derek, my apologies. New podcast listener, update us on your backstory. When slash why you guys start podcasting? How'd you meet? What guy? What do you guys do for a living? Etc. Um, so if you want kind of the the behind the scenes story, go back to listen to episode three hundred. Yeah. Um, uh, Brad and I, <laughs> the one of the original. Uh, co-hosts um did a little bit of history behind the show um but basically the show got started because we were doing this anyway we just weren't (laughs) recording it and putting on the internet yep uh so that's what we did (laughs) like it's it sounds kind of obvious but that's all we were doing we're sitting around and talking about games so we might as well share this stupidity with everybody Mm-hmm. Um, and Nobs and I met in college. Uh, we both went to the same college, and then the Hannah and the rest of us w- met on the forums. Yep. So he yep. Found the show somehow, and decided to keep listening to it against doctor's orders. Um, <laughs> I'm guessing Google. Yeah. Is that how you found us, Google? Yeah, actually, it was. I had been. Um, I had just gotten like my first like real full time job, and it was really boring. Uh, so I needed something to sort of get me through it. It was sort of like, okay, I'm just doing random stuff. I need to get some podcasts to listen to. I love video games. Let's listen to some video game podcasts. And it was a lot of like, oh, go to IGN, go to this stuff. I'm like, I don't want to listen to game reviewers talk about podcasts. Yeah. It's, it's, it's okay. It's, it's not, I don't know. It's just, it doesn't appeal to me as, as much as, it, it, like Giant Bomb's good. Um, uh, there's a couple other podcasts I listen to that are okay, but like when you're looking for real people to talk about games, this is this is the best place. People that are plopping down sixty bucks for a hot pile. Yeah, or yeah. fifteen bucks in the case of Hohokum. Well, you know, can't well, win them all. Just, just well, just as a, I mean, I purely out of curiosity, as you were an original listener. Um, yeah. <laughs> did that? Did that make our opinions? be more valid that we were actually buying these games? Not uh, not necessarily more valid, but you're definitely more invested. Well, like, that, you're yeah. not just... Yeah, someone's not just dropping here. You need to review this by Friday. Yeah, here's, a, a copy. here's a Steam download code. Good luck. Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, you're going out, you're buying your own game, and your opinions are not... Your opinions are more likely to be uh, stronger one way or the other. Yeah. Like you're gonna, you're probably gonna invest more time in something because you're not, you don't have a job to do that also revolves around video games. Yeah. So like, let's let's go back to you know our prime suspect here, Alpha Protocol. If you had three other games to play that week because you had to get reviews out, you never would have played that game and you never would have finished it and we never would have, we you know we never would have talked about it ever again. Yeah, exactly. It would have just been like it's super buggy, it's Obsidian, whatever. Yeah. But it's awesome. Because you put in the time and you got to the end and it's super crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of been Boston and I's common feather is we love broken games. We love those yeah. those orphan games. You yeah. Know, those games where everybody's like, okay, it's like a four out of ten. And we're like, yeah, but that four out of ten is really good, right guys? <laughs> well, let me think like the like Gladius. I don't think that game reviewed well. That's original Xbox title. Yeah. And that game, that game reviewed good. terrible. But I love that game. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's just I don't know, there's something really appealing to me for like this scrappy underdog game. Especially yeah. if it has if the majority of the game is 
either good or kind of ambitious, like plucky almost. Where it's sort of like, man, you just you you jumped and you missed it by like a couple inches, but man, you tried. That's a heck <laughs> yeah. of a jump. <laughs> yeah, you you really gave it a shot. Yeah. Um, that that well, usually I games get a lot of credit for me for doing that, but also I, I'll be honest, I don't think Alpha Protocol is a good game, but I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, like exactly. But and I if if anybody has listened for long enough, or if if you can kind of fairly parse that sentence, if you don't want to put up with a game that has some BS in it, don't buy that. If you want, yeah. if you're looking for something that's unique or different or interesting, but maybe a little broken, that's you'll have an experience. Yes, you will. Yeah. Well, I also, I mean. Uh, it seems like a lot of the games we love more than anything else aren't the quote popular great games. Right. Like yeah. uh like with our unabashed love for Guilty Gear and and DOA. Yep. Like yeah. those games are not popular. They're like, not Street at Fighter. all. So <laughs> No. Yeah. It, I mean it's not Street Fighter or and or Tekken and for some reason, those games seem to get all the popularity and all the love, while the games we like gravitate to always just seem to be just off of that line. Well, yeah, I think too for us, also we we naturally gravitate to weird Japanese games because <laughs> that's kind of what we grew up with. Yeah, you know, like you look at the Master System, you look at the NES, and even to a a, a lesser extent, the Super NES and the Genesis. Those are some really weird games. So when something like Katamari comes out, we're like, great. Look at this stupid Japanese game where you're rolling up stuff with this dumb ball. Great. Yep. Oh, I still remember that moment you called me over to your room. He's like, you're going to giggle. He's like, oh, you got to see the interest of the game. I got to reset this. You got to see this. I got to reset this. You got to start. Just wait until the ducks come. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait till the ducks. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, what are you watching? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, here come redheaded mallards flapping. Na, 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 na. Like, what? Dude, what am I sitting through? Oh, here, you got to play it. It throws a controller at me. Nice. It's just... And I feel like those are the games that, to me, the the most interesting thing in gaming is when you pick up that game that it seems like it's, it, it when you find that hidden gem, when you find that like five dollar game on Steam, like Risk of Rain that uh, oh. that um, um, your friend Heiko uh, re- recommended to me, and it's like, all right, yeah. this game looks fun. Ooh, I just Good. lost four hours playing this. You know, yeah. like, it's those sort of things that when you can find a game like that, or you, or like me picking up Guilty Gear X in the bargain bin of yeah. a GameStop, and I'm like, this looks dumb. And it is like <laughs> oh, $5, yeah. but it also looked kind of metal. Maybe I'll try it. What is this thing? And Nobs and I play have played it for years. Oh, and yeah. that is not just kind it is super metal. Yeah, it's like, it's incredibly metal. And I feel like what appeals to me so much in games is being able to find that hidden gem, especially now that there are so many games coming out. You can find that one game that is just kind of really weird or just a little broken or kind of has marketed, gotten marketed wrong or something, and it's just a genuinely outstanding game. Yeah. And I love that. Well, I... And that's why I mean that's why I've been a Sega fan, my unabashed Sega fan my whole life. That's why I gave up playing EA Madden because what they did with the Dreamcast and that whole thing, it turned me into loving actually it turned out to be a better game in the two K series. Yeah. And is. and there's just all those weird little things that uh we love like the same thing with racing games. Like Project Gotham is still my favorite racing game of all time. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Or no, Metropolis Street Racer is still my all-time favorite racing game. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on to this other tweet. Otherwise, we're just gonna talk about how much we love games for two more hours. Memory, yeah. memory lanes, memory lanes, a long road. Yeah. Uh, the other GZ writes and says, "I love when a company makes the game cover reversible, like with Gears of War three or God of War three. I don't know. Uh, yeah, God of War III. or Demon Souls." Uh, what are your favorite reversible covers? I like Demon Souls. I, th- I thought that was a cool idea. Yeah. Um, God, there's uh, one on 360 that I really liked, and I'm totally drawing a blank on it now. 
I uh, like there the was Xenoblade. Um, oh, Chronicles Xenoblade for me was fantastic. Yeah. And uh, Metal Gear Solid Five Ground Zeroes for PS4 was really oh, slick too. Yeah, yeah. You see, and that's the reason why you buy original copies of stuff because you have these little extra things on it, like yeah. all like the God of War, all every all three of them were reversible. Oh, that's right. Um, Toxic Joker says that, Bioshock Infinite. Oh, yeah. Bioshock yeah, Infinite was a good really good one. Yeah. Wasn't that, and like, fan-voted, too? Yep. Yeah. And I absolutely love the comic book-style cover for um, Marvel vs. Capcom uh, 3. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. That yeah. was a cool one. Because that one was amazing. Mm. Man. Uh, Many Derek writes in again, I know you guys are golf fans. What do you think slash know of that new golf club game coming out where you build courses, etc.? Um I think the golf club sounds really cool. I I bought it early access on Steam um, and still haven't had a chance to, to get into it. I think not only building courses is super cool, but I think the thing that's the most appealing to me is having it generate courses, generates random yeah. courses. Um, oh, that's kind of sweet. And then you can change sliders, you know, like difficulty and size of sand traps or you know, mm. uh, speed of the green and stuff like that, or number of water hazards or stuff like that. So you can really kind of, you want a super easy course, you can do that. You want something a little more challenging, you can do that. Um, so I think that, that to me, I, I think is a lot more appealing than, it has like built-in courses. I don't think they have any of the official courses because those are expensive. Yeah. Um, but I think they have kind of built-in standard you know, these are always the same courses, but I kind of, yeah. I think that would extend the life of a game like that considerably by just saying like, I don't know, man, I can I have a course that's mostly underwater today? Cool. I'll go play that. Yeah. Because I'm almost sure there's still people playing uh, Sid Meier's uh, Sim Golf. Oh, sure. I have a copy I'm of sure it on my are. desktop right now. Nice. Because yep. that game is great. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Serge Meister writes in and says, "What's your worst experience in gaming?" Um, I I I have my knee jerk reaction here. I reviewed games for for a very very short time, um, mm -hmm. and I liked the majority of what I reviewed. Um, but there's one game on Steam that I reviewed called Scourge Outbreak. Ooh. That is, I. I when I reviewed it, I tried to find something nice to say about it, and I couldn't. I mean, nearly everything in the game was so, so bad. And the company has been patching it ever since. And I reviewed it like <laughs> three years ago. Wow. It is just, if, if you had someone that wanted to make a Gears of War game based on screenshots alone and had never really played a game before that's what they would make. Mm. It just that's an rough. abomination. Wow. And I like and most games like when you when I talked about Hohokam, I know that there's a silver lining in that game because I know that game is out there. there there's someone out there that would love that game. I, yeah. I don't know an audience for Scourge Outbreak. Like it's um, it's just so mediocre. I will have to go back to the well on Drake of the 99 Dragons again. Um <laughs> Because that was one of those games where you know I was working in retail and we got all the promo material for it. I was like, wow, this looks really cool. It had that, you know, it very much looks like Batman the Animated Series. It's that, like, neon gothic style yeah. of art that's really cool looking. I was like, wow, you know, like a really nice stylized game with, you know, you know gun and melee combat. This is going to be really cool. And then I played it and it was the buggiest, just ugliest, most terrible mess of a game I've ever played in my life. I, I own a copy of that now, and just yeah. looking through, just even kind of looking at how they promoted the game to you after you purchased it, except for the yeah. cool like comic book that it came with, yeah. is looks pretty bad. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It was, uh, it was a disappointment. It was something I had been looking forward to, and... Uh, just like I, I pretty much ignored all the warning signs. Like there were some pretty clear ones that this was gonna be terrible, um, and just I, I remember the, the the thing that broke me. I was like, okay, the first couple levels were a little bad. Let's uh, let's let's plow through. I got to a level where I actually couldn't finish because I had clipped through the environment. Nice. 
and gotten into an area that I shouldn't have been in, and like I couldn't return to where I'd been to because it was a it was an escort mission, which was another huge tip off. Oh boy! Um, and it just I turned it off. I pulled it out of my Xbox, and I never put it back in. Jeez. Yeah. Oh. Uh. I think uh, for me it's got to be Guilty Gear Asuka. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I hate to keep coming back to that that nasty. It just seared in our brain. Like, I think well, it was at a point where we were so hungry for a new Guilty Gear because X was good, X two yeah. was even better, and they kept they added a ton of stuff. And they're like, "Oh, there's a it, new one with more stuff." Well, it was even better. Like X was great. X two was was phenomenal and then they had that release a sharp reload that, oh, that was for the great. xbox that yeah, was, was almost perfect yeah yeah i mean there was not a flaw that we could be found in that game yeah and we were i mean we've been playing the crap out of it and then all of a sudden like oh dude isuka's coming out i was like oh sweet oh there's a side scroller better yep and like it just like line on it after line on it after line and kept coming out about the game that was going to be this great thing and then all of a sudden we play it and it was like why am I facing the wrong direction? Yeah. Wh- What's happening here? Why right. is everything broken? Yeah. Why? Wh- okay, I understand the multiple plane thing, I think. <laughs> like, because not only did you have to hit a button to turn around, which is yeah. the worst gaming decision in a fighting game of all time ever. Yep. yep. And it was a shoulder button. It was like R1 yeah. and L1. And if you hit the wrong one, you would just keep facing the way you were facing. Yep. Or if you, it, it was it was a light tap. So if you hit it, held it, it did something else, which made it even more complicated. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, I forgot the, about the that. Both, the, and then you had to hit the same. I think you had to hold the button to flip to flip panes or planes because there was it was four tiers. So you had like you had like up on the screen, back one, back two, back like far away. Yeah. And then you know this flight's going on between three guys, and like I hear I'm kicking the crap out of the, the invisible barrier. I'm like pulling specials and going the wrong way. I'm like, this is just this is the worst. And we played it and played it and played it to the point where we're like, I, I if we play this game again, I'm gonna microwave the disc. Yeah, I, we just have to go back to X two. It's wow. it was it's really interesting because it's. I feel like the choices that they made were were mostly really good and I, I I applaud them for taking some chances it just at every turn if if they had a, hit a fork in the road with a decision they made the wrong one every time <laughs> and just and it like not, it's it incredible to see a game the coming off of the heels of you know sharp reload which I feel is kind of the definitive guilty gear yep. experience it is and then hitting this game which I could understand was maybe their first game. Like, when you play Battle Fantasia, which is made by the same company... Oh, that's another one that burned me. That burned me, too. And it's not a bad game. It's just not... It need a little more time in the oven. You know, yeah. kind of like Asuka, where it's just... It needed playtesting. Yeah, like, just, I, is just there, think I about imagine, it a little more. I couldn't imagine a person testing that game saying... Wait a minute... <laughs> <laughs> I'm kicking stuff over in my house. Through my controller. I mean, wait a minute. This this isn't right. I was like, well, there's a reason for it. I was like, I don't care what your reason is. If I run past something, I shouldn't have to hit a button to turn around because every other game we've ever played ever turns around automatically. Yeah. If it's, Even yeah. Genesis games figure that out. If it's not yeah. fun, it's not fun at the end of the day. Mm. Uh, next tweet is here from... Bick Trick Rewind. Uh, hmm. Will you guys ever have more than three people? I really liked the Chicago meetup and keep up the good job. Um, we, I hesitate to have more than three people on the show because it, it's kind of two side effects. One, the show gets really long. Yeah. Um, and two, there's it's too hard to stop crosstalk. Um, and I feel like someone kind of always gets left out of the show. Um, yeah, and that even happened with the Chicago Meetup show. It was a lot of me, Scott, and Jay Z, and not a whole lot of Infinity Chicken. Yeah, it it's kind of unfortunate with how most of these shows go. And for this show, the sweet spot is kind of three people, um, mm-hmm. or it's three, real two or hard. three people. 
it, I mean, it's real hard if you're not sitting in the same room to to play off of the other person too. Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. like that's that's probably the hardest thing because you know, recording. Like, I can't see Boston, so that's why I'm always stomping on him every once in a yeah. while. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, no, um, I mean, there's not three is kind of our sweet spot. So it yeah. has worked well for us for the last six years, seven years. <laughs> so. Okay, we're gonna stick with it. It's been yeah. that long. It's yeah, since November two thousand seven. Wow. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on to emails. Uh, Moonpeer writes in and says, "So, Darksiders three, what are your thoughts on the former studio members from Vigil speaking to the current owners of the Darksiders IP about making Darksiders three? Um, I think about it in the same way that I think about Zone of the Enders three. It does not mm. exist until I have it in my hands." Yeah. Right. Because if not, I will drive myself insane with anticipation. Because I need well, Darksiders three, like, we like need... three and four. Let's let's just yeah. let's just do it. But until it's actually coming out, everything's good. Nothing's been announced. Totally zen. Darksiders yeah. one and two were really good. <laughs> yeah, calm, calm your mind. Yes, like it's <laughs> because there's so many games out there that that could have came that never did, and they just kind of fell apart. And it just, I don't want my hopes crushed like that. Well, and if they're gonna start Dark, let's say they start Darksiders three this year, that's not gonna come out for a couple of years. Yeah. So, I, 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 there's no sense in getting excited. Am I excited about those conversations? Yeah. Yeah. Am I keeping myself in check? Barely. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, barely because then you start doing the reverse math. He's like, well, if they had THQ would never close, they didn't shut all the stuff down, it would be here next year. And yeah. You're like, yeah. oh. We'd get a hot PS4, Xbox One version of Darksiders 3. Yep. Yeah. And that to me is, that's like an earwig. You know, like I can't think about it because it just, it starts hurting. Uh, Moonpeer also writes another email uh, says I've been listening to old episodes to catch up on my 18th month's month absence from the internet so Ooh. yeah me being me I started at the beginning and re-listening to them all up to <laughs> episode 290 something in about a month uh, parenthetically insomnia for the quote unquote win um, <laughs> Hannah mentions in Alan Wake episode 4 there's a musical moment that he likes Having never played the game, I don't know, but if it's metal music, the band is a spinoff of the Finnish metal band called Poets of the Fall. Yes. Please give, give them a listen as they are incredible. The same band did Alan Wake OST and Max Payne 1 and 2. Yeah. I highly recommend actually, them to anyone, especially their debut album, Lift. Yeah, they're actually a bunch of dudes from, I think a couple of them actually work at Remedy. Oh, cool. Um, if I remember correctly, but they did the... Um, I think it was the ending song for uh, Max Payne 2, Late Goodbye, which is fantastic. And the, they call themselves, um, in Alan Wake, they refer to themselves as the old gods of Asgard. Yeah. Which is phenomenal. Yeah. And, oh, God, Alan Wake's so good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, next email is from Evan. Hey, guys, it's Evan. Hey, Evan. Hey. Uh, hey, Evan. I hope all is well. I recently found out I'll be moving to Washington, D.C. for a job opportunity, and my question has two parts. First off, congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what are some of your favorite Vita games that can be picked up and played for short periods of time, like on a subway ride? Also, for the same reason, do you think it is worth <laughs> it to buy a 3DS as well? Have a great day. Keep up the good work. So, well, Vita Viking... All right, so obviously you need to get Luminous Electronic Symphony. Yeah, you course. can pick that up and put it down at any time. Uh, hold on. Well, here's the thing with the Vita: Says, every game is pick up and play. It is because you can just hit the you can you hit this button and it goes away, and then you just start it back up again. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yep. Yeah, um, yeah. But, your pause is a soft soft sleep. Yeah. Like, yeah. Still think, Splunky. Uh, Rogue Legacy, Ali Ali, uh, I think I mentioned Fez already. Um, Dragon's Crown is really good. Uh, uh, what is? Uh, there's so many games. There's so many games. Just all of them. Just all of them. Yeah. Get a 64 gigabyte memory card and just PlayStation Plus and just buy everything else because yep. it's all fantastic. And I think for the 3DS, I I think the 3DS is a a good choice. Um, if only because most of the games are going to be pretty cheap. 
uh, yeah. now. And it has the same thing. You can just close it, and it'll go to sleep. So yeah, I, yeah. I think either one of them, whichever platform has the games you want to play on it, mm -hmm. I would personally recommend the Vita because of all the cross-buy great indies and PlayStation yeah. Plus. Yeah. Um, that, to me, is a really strong selling point. But if it doesn't have the games you want to play, then, you know, yeah, don't buy it. Toxic Joker mentions uh, Child of Light, and along the same vein that as that, uh, the Rayman games, probably yes. Rayman Legends over yes. Origins, because uh, Legends contains the levels from Origins. Yep. Two um, games in one. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, Hot Shots Golf is also great. You can pick up, pick that up, play yeah. a few holes. That's a great the version. Way. Yeah. Uh, there's just... Oh, God. Seriously, just toss me a game on Twitter at the Hannah, and I will let you know if that's a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Yep. Your personal <laughs> Vita Viking. Yeah. Uh, all right. Our last email here is from Jim. He says, hey, it's your old buddy Jim in Denver. Remember Anyways Borderlands to the girl at the bar? Not my finest moment. <laughs> <laughs> I had totally forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jim, you're our spirit animal. <laughs> Uh, anyways, just want to start off with some props. I've been a gamer since, um, forever. My friends will play the new Call of Duties and the Maddens, but they don't have the same passion and open-mindedness I have for games. So it's awesome I can tune in every week and listen to some cool dudes that share my love for the epicness that is gaming. Uh, with crazy work weeks, moving, holidays, and even with the loss of pets, you guys still manage to pull together a great quality show. I mean, I get teary-eyed when someone kills my dog in Call of Duty, uh, <laughs> sorry for your lost Boston. Pets always seem to make it on the show, whether it's a cat on the keyboard or hearing boomers' very loud opinions. Uh, <laughs> but thanks to you guys, I've played so many awesome games I never, I would have never even looked at twice at. And this is a really good list to reinforce what we were talking about earlier about hidden gems. Yeah. Uh, Guacamelee, Wizard. Oh, yeah, another Vita game. Uh, yeah, both of those, Guacamelee and Wizard are both Vita games. Uh, the Darkness 1 and 2... And also a love-hate relationship with BF4. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is love-hate. <laughs> uh, so thanks for this awesome, quote-unquote, dumb show. My question, what was your favorite game shown at Gamescom? Mine was Silent Hills. The PT gameplay was as scary as this email is long. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't... I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> I, I want to say that I was excited about... Um, tear away for ps4 but that's kind of cool never finished that game on vita because i yeah. kind of didn't enjoy playing it um as as adorable as it was yeah um i think for me probably um is a com is is probably a tie between drive club or um uh forza horizon 2 I, I okay. feel like I really need to sink my teeth into a, a racing game right now, and I'm I am so excited for Forza Horizon Two that I it is unbearable. Yeah, uh, of the stuff that I watched, uh, I'm really interested in obviously First Light for Infamous. Yeah. Um, but Hellblade caught me by surprise because the art direction in that looks phenomenal. I mean that's a nin that's a Ninja Theory game. I'm gonna buy yeah. it no matter what. I, I yeah. love their games. Nobs, anything you saw that? Nothing really stuck out to me. I'm just still really excited to get my hands on Sunset Overdrive. I can't wait for that game. I mean, nice. the, every everything I see in that game just I, it just looks better and better. That, like at first it kind of seemed kind of wonky, and, uh, and then goofy. every video that comes out just seems like okay. I think with every okay. I think with every video that comes out, uh, it's it's the Insomniac that I love that made the Ratchet and Clank games. Yeah, yep. and it's that sort of thing where it's like, yeah, you shot a rocket and the explosion spells out boom, great. That's fantastic. You know, like it's all those it's all those little and big things that that company does so well. Oh man. <laughs> uh, Good stuff. <laughs> Nightly. <laughs> the crappy vampire show from the Saints Row. <laughs> oh, I forgot about Nightblade. That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, on a, a Nightblade note, uh, that's our episode <laughs> this week. Uh, you can visit us at tvgp.tv. Email us tvgpfans at gmail.com. 
Tweet us at TVGP and everything else is on the right hand side of the page. Please join the forums. Don't forget to mark yourselves on the map. Join us for Monday Night Game Night, 10 p.m. EST on the Xbox One for some battlefielding. Um, Thursday Night Game Night, uh, Steam Game Night on the PC. So mm -hmm. join the community. I'm sure we're playing something. And they're trying to get a Wednesday Night Game Night going on PS4. So PS4 owners, uh, hit up the forums. Let us know if you're free. Nice. Yeah. Um, TVGP Game Club uh, voting number 20 wrapped up, and gee, guess what it was? It was Saints Row the Third. You. Yeah. Nobs won. Um, Never underestimate my influence. Master no. influencer. Never will. So that, that starts whenever you start playing it. Uh, we're going to try and record the recap around September 18th. Um, so look forward to that. Yeah, that's plenty Hannah, of time play... to finish that game. Yeah. Hannah, have you played through that before? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's great stuff. Good stuff. Fantastic. And don't forget, you can watch this dumb show live, twitch.tv slash E1M1 Network. Thank you very much for listening. We'll see you all next week. Laters. Peace. All right, what I'm have we got for titles? Uh, Calm down, see. dogs. We're not done yet. Well, I think they just recognize me saying laters and knowing the door's going to open soon. <laughs> I want to go laters. Uh, either you guys got titles? No, I didn't. Write anything down. All right, I got comfort food games, shoot my friends, uh, smash by a supply crate, Donnie's little gifts, uh, don't drive <laughs> on the roads, <laughs> blowing up the Duke brothers, uh, designed to shoot the skies, scrap weight, two pence a copter, uh, go bird hunting, uh, John Waters well quaffed. <laughs> <laughs> Every <laughs> contour of his swing. Um, memory lane is a long road. And Jim, you're our spirit animal. I The only one I wrote down was Donnie's Little Gifts. But which one's Practice pretty fantastic. Stories. I got a couple from chat, but I think we know the winner here. Yeah. Uh, the Dude Brothers. Uh, superpower, Zero Accuracy. Uh, we Love the Orphan Games. And Patient Zero. I think it's got to be Donnie's little gifts. It really does. It sound it sounds like a Make a Wish Foundation. <laughs> well, no, because it gets like it, the best part about it is is uh, one of us will get killed. Usually, it's either Tom's you or myself, and we'll just be screaming. He's like, "Oh, did you find my little present? I, <laughs> I left it there just for you, cupcake." Like That's it's amazing. fantastic. All right, starting in three, two, one. This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 356, for August 18th, 2014. Donnie's Little Gifts. Wow. Bum, 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 bum. All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. We'll see you all next week. Peace. Later. Later.